It is a unique monument because it's, it's not a figure. Standing near the intersection of Canal and 15th Streets may be one of the most peculiar attractions in all of Virginia. It doesn't look like a typical memorial. A massive monument perched on a pedestal, this is not. Just a simple metal box, frozen in time. It is a very interesting uh, memorial. The low-key landmark honors one of the most daring escapes in American history, orchestrated by a Virginian hungry to taste liberty for the first time. There was nobody else quite like him uh, on the scene. Henry Brown is born into slavery in Louisa County around 1816. Came from a humble beginning. Historian Jeffrey Ruggles says Brown is a married father of three who sings in a church choir. Living in Richmond, he was working in a tobacco factory. But in 1849, one event sends Henry reeling, a moment of despair that alters his life forever. Henry's wife, Nancy, is sold to a new owner in North Carolina. And when his wife was sold, the, the rules were that the children went with the wife, so he lost his whole family in that sale. The 33-year-old bids his loved ones farewell forever. He grabbed her hand and they walked together to the edge of town. And there was nothing he could do about it. Mary Lauderdale with the Black History Museum and Cultural Center says a desperate Henry makes a bold decision. Find freedom at any cost. You have to take the chance. He would not run away under the cover of darkness or choose violence. Henry's plot involves deception and risk. Well, it was a very dangerous plan. On March 29, 1849, Henry, with the help of two friends, a white shoemaker and a freed black man, climbs into a crate. There was an, a shipping service called Adams Express. Henry attempts to mail himself to freedom. Destination, Pennsylvania. It wasn't guaranteed that he would be successful, but he stuck it out. The three foot by two and a half foot box is nailed shut with the five foot eight, 200 pound father inside. Even when he was put on his head, you know, he, he didn't cry or make any sounds and he just, uh, and he said basically he prayed. Brown described at one point he passed out because he was upside down and you know, all the blood was flowing to his head. Karen Sherry with the Virginia Museum of History and Culture says Henry endures unimaginable hardships squeezed in the wooden box. He shipped himself as if he were a piece of cargo, as if he were a package. And legally, under slavery, he, a human being, was considered property. It can't be underemphasized uh, that, that, that how important this was, that he get out of Richmond by any means necessary. Harry Kolatch Jr., historian and senior writer with Richmond Magazine, says the crate is transferred from a train to a boat and then a wagon. The trip takes 27 hours. Be in that confined space for as long as he was, frankly, it just beggars the imagination. Henry remains resilient during each leg of his nearly 300 mile journey. The whole thing was an astounding physical as well as psychic feat to will himself to do this. Things that you would normally do in 24 hours, being cramped inside of a, a little dark box, scared the whole time that you might be found out. I can't even imagine half of the emotions that went through him. The special delivery arrives at the Anti-Slavery Society in Philadelphia the next day. My heart swelled in my throat. I could scarcely breathe. Great sweats came over me. I gave up all hope, related Brown. Jeffrey Ruggles, author of the unboxing of Henry Brown, says the escapee's friends on the outside fear the worst. We opened the box, wrote McKim, and up rose, with a face radiant with joy and gratitude, one of the finest looking men you ever saw in your life. Brown extended his hand and said, good morning, gentlemen. So, you know, it must have been just an incredible moment to know that such a daring and dangerous act ended up being successful and they were able to save one man from slavery. Henry's getaway causes a sensation. So the story of a slave having escaped in a box got out and then it ended up in the New York papers and all the papers reproduced it. So it became known that somebody had escaped in a box. The freed man travels the abolitionist circuit across the Northeast 
lecturing crowds on the evils of slavery. He very quickly became a celebrity. But Henry is not out of danger. The Fugitive Slave Law of 1850 forces Henry to move to England, where he remarries and reinvents himself as a performer and magician. But once Brown was out in public, he took to it. For 25 years, customers in the UK clamor to hear Box Brown retell his disappearing act from bondage. His story leaves audience members speechless. He carried his original box with him on tour, and, and he would climb in the box at shows. Before returning to North America in 1875, Henry publishes two autobiographies. I think one thing you could say about Henry Brown is that, that he, he thought outside the box. He did things that other people hadn't done. It was one of the most ingenious and famous um, acts of self-emancipation. To this day, at the Virginia Museum of History and Culture, a rare 1850 lithograph of Henry emerging from his box survives in the archives. He likened it to a resurrection, and indeed that's the title of this print, The Resurrection of Henry Box Brown. Brown and his family eventually settle in Toronto, never returning to his native Richmond. This was his life. He was trying to save himself and, and save himself and get to freedom. Henry died on June 15th, 1897. He was 82 years old. Even though he got his freedom, he still lost a lot in his lifetime. 175 years later, the great escape still reverberates across the centuries. I think it's an incredibly powerful story to underscore the intense desire for liberty among enslaved African Americans. Henry Box Brown, a man who risked so much to set himself free. I mean, he made his own way. He, he, many of the things he did, he just created a path that wasn't there, and he just made the path. For I Have a Story, I'm Greg McQuaid, CBS 6 News.